What's up? It's Victor Savell back with another video. This is another blender kind of project that I'm gonna look at. This one actually went quite big on Facebook and Instagram and it's been months but uh, here is the video. I've been actually made it three times before and I really didn't like the way I talked about it. And a little side note on this project, I won't be able to be inside the actual blender project because in an attempt to save all that stuff for the new build that I had, the new computer build, I transferred it to a different drive that I don't have anymore so all the project stuff is gone. So I'm going to use some old footage that I recorded with some new voiceover on it. Uh, I'm still going to show you everything in the project but I'm not really going to be in it at the time that I'm talking about it. So it's going to be a little bit weird, a little bit different. Um, this is a screen replacement tutorial. Um, it went, it's one of my biggest videos on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram with the most views because people thought it was interesting how it looked, how the uh, screen looked 3D. I'm going to talk more about it and where the idea came from, the pitfalls I've had uh, in making it, the kind of lessons I learned from it. I'll give you some tips and tricks, but it's not really a walkthrough video, not a really a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, I can make one of those as well. If, uh, if some people would like it, leave it in the comments below. Without further ado, let's jump in. Let's do it. All right, so basically it's going to be a little bit weird, a little different because I'm not uh, actually in control of what I'm seeing. But uh, here's the original. This was uploaded through Instagram to Facebook. Resolution is your friend when you're doing stuff like this. Uh, not only it was great that the square, that I left it on square, it cut off a little bit of the left side of the image, which is actually a little bit problematic because of that little cup that you see on the left, which actually uh, is not really interacting well with the screen. Here's the original, the full one. I actually ended up going into After Effects and matting out that cup. Um, and it, it's not the best job I've ever done, but it is better than the original that I uploaded. So, as you can see, the cup is a little bit obscuring it. It's not correct. I did it all by eye. You can see here I'm in the After Effects project, but we're just gonna go through, uh, we're gonna go through that later on this video because that was the last steps that I did. So jumping into Blender we have the original project file here and we're in uh, just the, the normal view for Blender just kind of showing you what it looks like. So this is all that is uh, actually being done in 3D. So the screen includes including the monitor including the bezel um, and all the, the edges of the monitor around which I ended up doing later because it was easier to do that and just cover the exe ex existing monitor than to really pixel perfectly match the screen so that's actually one thing I learned there uh, here we can see an up close look at the nodes which do not look good up close um, again resolution is your friend and you just need to be aware of how far you are away from the screen and how much detail you really need to put into these. Of course, always more detail the better, but why would you want to waste some time pixel perfecting something so small that's going to be away from the actual um, camera and it's not even going to really show up. Uh, so good time saver uh, tip there. I'm just kind of moving this thing around in 3D now just to so you see which are areas are separated. Um, I did cheat a little bit on perspective as well because I wanted a little more pop, uh, a little more distance from the monitor so you can see that it's 3D and uh, you know you can see that right away. As you can see my node setup is very very simple. I don't even think I had an actual glare or any type of uh, gloss node set up um, on these. So here we go into a little bit of sped up footage of uh, when I started to recreate it. So I basically started, this is the exact footage that I had in the beginning. It was just a piece of footage um, that I did on my phone actually. I, I started, I did it with my DSLR first and then I just got this brand new phone at the time and I was like I'm just gonna do it in 4K to see how the 4K thing works on the camera as well as uh, to give me more image information so I can do a better track and then I can always downscale that and put in the 1080p version so as you can see I basically went to motion tracking in Blender 
and set the screen up to have somewhat of a checker texture. Uh, checkers are, are pretty good for this reason because with the good enough tracker size you can keep your, your tracking points on uh, pretty well. Um, now the corners of the screen are very important as well if you want to save some time because uh, you can kind of parent things or uh, just to get that whole perspective it's important to do you know the whole screen and as many uh, trackers as you can actually and you can see me tracking these points so this was originally what gave me that motion of the camera movement and um, really helped me out later on um, and then again this wasn't the first time I did it this is kind of a recreation and the first one I ended up with um, a 0 0.9 on um, on the solve error so that's not bad uh, it could be better and it would be better if I took a little more time on it but it was good enough and and I wasn't uh, too crazy about getting that done better uh, as you see this is the actual version uh, that I used here in the footage I'm kind of jumping back and forth, forth between something I'm creating now versus the actual original uh, footage um, the key problems that I came up uh, that I that I kind of had was blenders built in correction when it comes to the focal uh, the angle right um, so that kind of uh, screw things up for me um, because it's trying to interpolate and and find the lens that you're using and the the uh, chromatic aberration and that lens curvature and stuff and tries to rip reproduce that but at the same time it also kind of bent the edge of my screen so that's why I ended up just doing the whole bezel um, in 3D and just extruded that and that, that way and the footage I didn't see that curve uh, that Blender thought you know it, it, it's thinking it's fixing things and then of course you can disable it but then thing, things didn't line up either way I think some of this is actually um, problematic uh, in the Voodoo Tracker as well so as far as what I've used as, uh, uh, as images I just took a screenshot of blender which was this right here 1080p this was the base image I used and then I cut the actual plane up once I did my tracking I did a uh, I just made a regular plane um, I cut up this image that I originally took so I could have an actual background to the node network and the UV editor and uh, of course because I had to separate that because the camera can see behind it so um, you have to have just uh, uh, something that's blank behind it um, and that's all I used um, here you can see in, in, in a little sped up way of doing the camera track and then I'm positioning the screen onto the grid and just kind of trying to follow through and kind of fix um, fix the perspective and really try to fine-tune where the screen was um, and I think I this is a recreation but I, I, I pretty much nailed it except you can see that sometimes the uh, perspective isn't correct um, then I go into the UV and I just set up a regular material for it I'll, I'll go in and add the image which is the image of the screen um, and this will give me the original um, look of the monitor uh, that I that I was planning to do so you know playing with UVs and stuff and of course I could have done it different and I should have actually had the image uh, turned on on the UV editor but you know this was such kind of just a it was a test and a rush kind of thing it wasn't really a um, a project that I was trying to put a lot of time in I was I was just gonna see um, how I would do it if I did it so um, proof of concept kind of experimenting was the name of the game here and using the same image for all the pop-outs actually made sense because whatever was popping out of the screen that I didn't want to have a background on all I needed to do is to use the same UV as you can see here I make a new plane make the new plane uh, 
size it to the to the uh, uh, to the size of the actual panel in the program, and then use the same UV image and just play in with the UVs until I get that panel look back on with the correct aspect ratio and just a little bit of resizing would have made it easier if I turned on the image on the UV editor and I could have just zoomed in and did that way um, you know whatever there's ma many ways to do things in Blender so um, again this looks good from far away um, now that I made a different panel I could pop it out extrude it boom do a standard texture standard shader on the side not even anything crazy just a diffuse shader with a, a you know regular material kind of matching the same color as you can see there um, and same thing for like the texture okay this is another panel I'm doing here um, again I I saved this panel and I made a new image for it so um, that way the, the panel could be empty and then I used the UV image and the original image uh, uh, to kind of model the little pieces of the node network which is what I'm gonna get into here um, so the node network uh, were basically um, just regular uh, curves extruded and of course that's uh, very easy very very easy to do in blender and uh, and also the little nodes were uh, just beveled uh, rectangles you know and everything else is beveled rectangles here um, the tops of the rectangles as we're gonna see here in a little bit uh, is what I textured and then the sides and of course I deleted the back face but the sides uh, were the same kind of uh, uh, gray non-descriptive uh, shader that I just kind of set up which was or maybe it may even be default uh, uh, I'm not even sure um, the idea to kind of make the 3d uh, window uh, actually 3d came last minute um, here you can see the note networks I just thought I just thought it would be cool it would be neat to have it go back to uh, when when I'm going around it would be neat that the actual square would reveal because it's 3d and it's actually rotating as well so I thought that would be a cool little added little trick to it um, and here we're in After Effects and we're working on the cup so the cup was uh, a problematic uh, a piece because I didn't realize it when I first made the video it actually didn't cover the screen per se but then when I made the bezel bigger around the monitor it started covering the cup and interacting with the cup with from that objective and that that view that I had um, sometimes it didn't look right because the cup should have covered the monitor so what I ended up doing is a lot of manual keyframes and some trackers so I tracked some of those dots there on the actual cup I got the information that I needed XY on the track that gave me a pretty stable mask that I could pair into it and um, using the two pieces of footage so I had the original footage and then I had the the footage with the screen on it I used the tracker a combination between the tracker and some manual work um, some some frame by frame kind of work to expand it um, to make sure that the tracker stays dead on doesn't have a lot of manual motion but at the same time does change with the cup kind of coming into the frame so the X and Y is great you could do the X and Y's in uh, uh, in After Effects very easily but uh, 3D depth you will have to kind of do it manually um, unless you're tracking the whole same scene in Blender again and or in After Effects again, you know I didn't want to do go through all that And that's all for now uh, Let me know if you'd like to see a detailed step-by-step -step video on how to make this I might still do it even with it without any requests because I might want to redo this in 2.8 to kind of get myself familiar on the camera match um, 
side of things even though none of that really changed but 2.8 is so different than 2.79 that it's it would be cool to maybe make a video that's kind of using 2.8 from scratch talks about the new features of it and then how to make uh, something like this so thanks for watching please subscribe if you liked any of this I'll be back with other videos thanks again see you later Thank you.